Good morning on this super chilly Georgia day. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I wanted to show you guys what I was doing in my shower. I got this Schluter Curdy Board shower pan, waterproof membrane, and I'm going to put that as my floor instead of this van floor. So I'm going to cut this out. I already started the process. I peeled back these steel studs and tried cutting them out. So I'm going to take this off-centered hole, I'm going to cut this out and use that as a template and put it on this and cut this out to fit this space. And this is a way better waterproofing system because I'll take that drain, put it in here and then kind of sandwich it in there with this. And that just creates a real good watertight seal. And then same process with the uh, the walls I'll take this membrane because I got some rolls of this waterproof membrane that just goes on with some mortar like tile and you stick it on there and that just seals up everything nice and nice and watertight so what I did here with all my pipes running behind this wall was went ahead and sprayed some waterproof spray paint gorilla gorilla glue waterproofer I guess and I spread it on all my pipes, on my floor, so in case there is any late leaks back here that I don't know about, it'll be it'll be fine. And this is kind of what I got so far. It's not super pretty. I'm gonna clean it up with some caulk around this, and then when I, once I grout it with some black grout, everything will kind of seam together. But this is my little outdoor shower system. And I'm gonna wrap this tile around into the shower and that'll look pretty cool and i'm going to tile this whole back waterproof everything back here so run that membrane uh, i probably don't need to run it all the way but i'm going to tile everything in here recurring theme that i have noticed with these videos is i explain everything i'm going to do and then completely change that process i thought i was just going to waterproof this and that'll be it and then I found this, and I'm going to install that. So I'm going to take that out. But if you already did that, sorry. So just watch all of my videos, you know. Subscribe and like. All that good stuff. But I still got a little work to do here, but I, I, I like it so far. It's a little further down. I'm going to try to create something to stick this up in there and then grab it from the top. And just to keep it from... Uh, falling down that much but here's my overhead shower head see i'm six foot one tons of fun i dress to a t if you know what that's from it's a song but see i, I still with my beanie on i still got some room in here and i've I, I don't think i've seen anybody put this in a van and i'm excited to be the first or at least as far as i know the first so up in here if you can see it kind of dark I'll raise the brightness but I have my PEX pipe running into a 90 degree angle going straight down into my shower head and the uh, pipe is running in these grooves which is perfect thickness for half inch pipe so it's running up here running through this going through this beam and coming out into the center for my shower. And I've got this little LED waterproof light housing that I'm gonna wire a different switch to, but it's just a 12 volt positive and negative. And I'll put a little switch, you know, here or somewhere, and then I'll turn on my shower light. So my first step is to install this shower pan. So when I put up the walls I already put up that wall I don't know why but this membrane is going to run on top of the plywood and run into here and then the uh, curdy board system has little uh, corner strips that'll seal up all the edges and they actually have little like 90 degree corner things that'll go in all my corners 
on the ceilings and all the all that and that'll waterproof everything so let's cut it out man that took a long time word of advice cut your floor out before you do everything else anyway I got it now I got my template so from my template I cut it and I left this long because the way this is designed it's actually sloping towards the drain so my idea was leaving this as long as possible will give me some floor slope towards my drain it's not really really sloped but it is sloped so I'm gonna cut the uh, floor around this and recess that so everything is even except you know that slope and it looks the exact same but what I did was there was a one inch insulation underneath this floor and it was sticking up proud about half an inch so I cut all that insulation out and then this was recessed into the floor about a quarter inch so then I cut a quarter inch piece of plywood put it under there as a bit as a big spacer and a floor support for the shower unit and now it is flush but now I'm trying to figure out a way to glue it down and I think what I'm going to do is attach some temporary plywood pieces and glue it on all the corners push down the the uh, plywood screw it to the plywood in the back on the sides and that'll get all my sides and then I'm just going to put some weight down on the middle of it and then I'll attach a strip somewhere somehow like that I guess and just screw down these corners and then when I undo the screw all the glue will be dry and that'll stick this down and here's my shower ceiling on the ground just because it was going to be a lot easier to install this tile on the ground and without this being in the way and i didn't complete that little bit of tile because when this is on there you're not going to be able to tell so what i did on the back to keep the shower inlet I guess on there is attached a little hose clamp so now it's going to be super tight to the ceiling and it's not going to drop down like it, it was doing and I didn't tile the rest of it I'm going to have to do that upside down because I had to attach it with these screws to my actual ceiling and I didn't and I just used silicone to attach to this tile because it was going to be hard getting mortar in there and then squeezing out and messing up my clean lines. So now I'm going to permanently install my ceiling. Actually, I think I'm going to grout this before I put my shower back on it. So I'm going to tape up my LED strips and just get this finished to then install it. I just mixed up a little grout, a little charcoal color. You don't want it too runny. Right, this is borderline a little too runny. But you want to trowel it in. Then use a float, a grout float, and push it into all the little joints. And then once that's pushed in there, you get a sponge, damp sponge with a clean bucket of water that I do not have yet and you wipe all the grout away and wait a little bit and the drought will dry the grout will dry then you wipe it again and you just keep doing that process until it's all clean and it might freak you out a little bit when you're doing it but just keep pushing it into all the little joints making sure it's nice and clean and then when you got some excess, you 
just peel it away, slowly revealing what is left. Sponge is also necessary for getting all the lines in the grout real uh, uniform so they kind of have that same little dimple in it. So when you're pushing in the grout with the float, you'll have some spots that are high and low and then the sponge is able to conform to the uh, the actual lines so everything looks nice and nice and clean like it's supposed to be and then once you get to at a point like this you can get a dry sponge and then wipe it and it'll start looking pretty good there's a point when you're putting in grout that you just can't keep wiping it because it'll just keep pulling grout from the the inside of the lines and just keep wiping it so when you get a very thin film just let it dry and then you could go back with either a, a wet sponge to get rid of that haze or some grout haze remover which comes in like a, a spray bottle but anyway that's how you tile something and after that haze dried, I went over it one last time with a, a very lightly damp sponge, like barely any water on it. And then real quick, right after that, went over it with a dry sponge. And that looks pretty good. I won't even need that dehazer. So, I think that's pretty good to install now. And to remove the tape. And there it is installed looking pretty good now I'm gonna do my walls I had to put my ceiling in first so my walls will butt up to it and the walls will kind of act as another holding point and I know a lot of people scribe their walls with like cardboard or they just cut a big sheet of plywood and then slowly chip away at it but I thought I'd show you a different technique I cut some really thin strips out of plywood and just tacked them together to fit this shape and I use a little pin nailer and if you don't have a pin nailer you can use some hot glue and I guess some even tape would work but now I'm going to take this out place it on my plywood and cut it out well as you can tell I made a lot of progress without filming too much of it after I install or after I made that template and then I took off the template cut out the piece of plywood put the plywood in it was real late in the day couldn't see anything in the van didn't have any lights so it's um so i just called it a day went to work the next day and then got a job opportunity building some furniture for some lady so i'm a carpenter by trade so i mean you can't really tell with my my joints or anything but that's what i do to make money so I got uh, a job, and that went to another job, and that word of mouth went to another job, to another job, to another job, and now three months later, I'm back in the van finishing out the shower. So I will walk you through what I have done. So where we were last time, uh, there was no plywood anywhere, but what I did was I tacked kind of like this. I just had little strips of plywood and screwed it into here and pushed down this floor and I put some adhesive underneath it and put something heavy in the center of this and now it's all tacked down it's not moving anywhere put something in the corner to tack that down and then I went back and sprayed all my little um, pipe connections with that Gorilla waterproof sealer stuff it's just extra sealing around them. I mean, these shark bite fittings are pretty good and, pre and known for not really uh, leaking, but you never know. Uh, I cut out a little hole for my handheld shower mixer, stuck it in the corner. 
I don't know if you can see it kind of back in there, but it just connects like that. And I put a face and a handle on my shower mixer that was here. And I don't know if I explained what this was or not, but it's uh, supposed to be a bidet. And the reason I got a bidet was because of the uh, low profile aspect of it. I mean, the, it was like direct connection from where the uh, shower head mixes and where the pipe fittings like screw right into it. And all and like shower mixers like like those, you know, they're thick and wide. So this thing was real low profile. I was able to fit it within the span of like a, a stud. So. And actually, like, looking back on it, that one also fits in the span of a stud. And I thought this was going to be a lot lower profile, and then I just built it out anyway. So it really made no difference. But I like the way this looks as an outdoor shower thing. And it's simple to use. You, like, press a little button to turn it on, press it to turn it off. It's got the hot and cold right there. Anyway, the reason it looks like a pixelated puzzle is because I planned on putting some walnut veneer over this and I was just going to attach that directly to the studs and then decided last minute to just tile the rest of it just ease of operation so the next step is to waterproof the whole shower with that waterproofing membrane and I thought I'd show you before I do that I gotta relocate this wire to inside this column to move the switch over here. But just wanted to make sure the light works. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It looks real bright in here. It's bright outside, so I can't really tell, but it's like a there's a warm glow, you know? It's real nice. As I'm laying this membrane, this is the mortar, and I got a 3 16th inch trowel for a, a, a V notch trowel. And I'm only doing a couple feet at a time, so in case, because if I did the whole thing, some parts of it would be dry. So I'm only doing it a couple feet at a time, rolling it up like this, sticking it down. And then I'm going to take the flat edge of the trowel and push out all the mortar underneath it and knock down all the grooves in it to get it flat to the surface. And you should pull it back every now and then. Make sure you're getting good coverage, that it's covering evenly and nicely so it all sticks down pretty good. And then I notice when I just rub my hand over it, you can kind of feel in some places where the grooves are still uh, feelable, I guess, you can still feel the grooves in there and then just push them down with the uh, flat edge of a trowel. All right, my first wall is waterproofed. I think it's pretty nice. I just rolled it over this edge so that corners are all sealed up. Moving on. And that's done real quick for you guys don't mind on the little splotches that's just me pushing it out with my little trowel and it's getting a little bit of grout but i just wipe it off so everything's real smooth it just stained it a little bit this is going to be the probably trickiest wall got to go around my little mixer thing in my shower head this thing is on there with the pipe on there and I can't get it off so I'm gonna have to go around that
walls are all done. Next step is to put on my edges. And this stuff is a five inch roll, two and a half inches on each side. Same, same process. It's the same exact material. Just put on the mortar and then squeeze it out. Work it on my corners. And I ran out of the, uh, the tape or the, I call it tape, just the, the seam, the edge seam roll, whatever. I ran out, so I had a uh, extra membrane in that roll, and I just cut the same thickness as those strips. And I'm going to use that in my last corner. Just like that. Looking pretty. Now, last step. Put in the little corner corners. They just fit in there like that. Same process. Mortar it, squeeze it out. Corners all done. But as I was doing it and looking at it, I feel like the uh, the edges should overlap those corners. You know, because the water would flow over it. But in all the videos I watched, they put the corners on last, and I didn't even think twice about it. I don't know. I mean, you've got membrane going as far to the floor as possible, and then you got the tape overlapping two and a half inches on all sides, and then you got the corners on there overlapping the overlap two and a half inches, so no water's getting behind there. I was just, I was just thinking. I'm just going to install it like I saw the, the Schluter video people install it and think it's good enough and we are waterproof amazing thank you guys for being patient with the delay in the video I just wanted to get this done so I can get it out there and put it on YouTube and show you guys that I'm still working on the van I didn't install my drain yet I'm gonna do a separate video and that'll be a little shorty just to show you guys how to install that drain if you want an idea of what it's like working in a van in Georgia with a light shining in one little area. Welcome to Georgia. Well, thank you guys for watching. See you later.